90.5 The Night, Brookdale Public Radio. Jeff Raspy here with you. And it is indeed, again, always a pleasure to welcome Matthew Cause from Not A Surf to join us today. How are you? I'm great. Hey, Jeff. Hey, everybody. Anybody listening? Uh, yeah, everything's good. I'm glad to be uh, on the air with you again. Cool. So we're talking uh, this time around uh, because Not A Surf are playing Asbury Lanes in Asbury Park Friday, the 29th of July, um, along with a band called Hurry, who I want to talk about in a minute. Um, but I actually, I hadn't noticed this. I, I thought this was part of a quote unquote normal summer tour for Not A Surf. And I just realized that there are only four shows this week. Yeah, we were booked for a, a festival in Herndon, Virginia, and it was something that we've been asked to do for a few years in a row, and finally said, happily said yes, and it seemed like we should do a few shows on the way down. Okay, uh, so that's, I, my first guess was that maybe these were uh, makeups for uh, past postponements. I'm not sure, maybe the, I think maybe the Connecticut one is. Okay. Um, but the others, I think, are just fresh uh, fresh out of the oven. Okay, cool. Yeah, because it's Asbury Park, Hamden, Connecticut, which, by the way, is my dad's hometown, and uh, Massachusetts. Yeah. As okay. well as the festival in oh, great. Virginia, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, cool. So looking forward to having you guys come back to Asbury Park. It also got me thinking, um, I think most recently you did a solo show at the Saint. And yeah. you did a show for us, uh, a members only show a few years ago for which the poster is above my head. Yeah, yeah. That's um, right. But what do you recall when the last time Not a Surf played the shore was? I think it's I been don't, a while. Yeah, I think it's been a while. Um, I think my favorite memory is playing, um, I guess it was probably us and Super Drag and the Mises at the saint oh wow and i remember joe so that's probably 96 and joe reinecke of the mises saw the little bit of a surfboard that used to maybe still does i don't know mm -hmm. hanging on the wall at the saint that was the result of a um, possibly a, a shark encounter and right in the middle of the song he pops it off the wall throws it on the ground, stands on it, hangs 10 for a while, and maybe puts it back. I don't know. It was one of those. <laughs> I love thinking of, um, you know, just kind of great things people have done on stage, you know? Mm -hmm. Like uh, there was a band that Ira used to be in called um, The Headless Horseman. Oh, gosh, this, yeah. This yeah. guy, Chris Cush, who owned Mojo Guitars on 14th Street, um, he was one of the two guitar players and he took a solo that just blew my mind it was like you know 10 or 20 seconds of you know chuck berry garage rock kind of ripping and then he reached down with both hands and popped off the high e string and then the b string the g string the d string the a string and the low e string just broke them all i'd never seen anything so exciting <laughs> In my life it was a great <laughs> moment just you know just so over the top it's so great yes. i don't know why i'm talking about that but <laughs> i was gonna say a great moment for everyone except the guitar tech right well they definitely didn't have one and and uh <laughs> yeah, definitely so. him. yeah 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 <laughs> so he, he 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 did all that replacing himself but it was it was awesome <laughs> yeah Matthew from Not A Surf is here with us today. Not A Surf will be at Asbury Lanes in Asbury Park on Friday, July 29th, uh, with a band called Hurry, who some folks may know because I believe they're from Philadelphia. And I actually saw them earlier this year. They played a show in uh, Red Bank at the Count Basie opening for Brian Fallon. Oh, yeah. And they were terrific. So are, are they doing... All four of these well i guess not the festival but the others no i think they're ju they're just doing this one but we're really looking forward to it uh, matt the singer guitar player songwriter is an awesome guy i think they're great they're fantastic so um yeah we're really really psyched um yeah it'd be great if it was a whole tour but again this <laughs> is just this isn't really a tour so quick run for, yes for another for another time cool yeah Cause, cause i and i 
I'm guessing based on the reaction that I was sitting in the middle of it, that Count Basie show with Brian Fallon, that a lot of people didn't necessarily know who Hurry were, even though they were only from Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, I'm pretty sure, were quite impressed. Like, in, and in between Hurry and Brian, Warriors played. So more people were much more familiar with, with Warriors than, than yeah. Hurry. But I, I certainly, for one, was really impressed by, by Hurry. Awesome. Well, I haven't seen them since they played with us at um, Bowery Ballroom. I don't know. It must have been six or seven years ago. I really lose track of time. And I think, <laughs> you know, you know, I think the 90s were 12 years ago. I, yeah. I think everything that happened between 20 and two years ago was yeah. probably seven years ago. You know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm making it up, but I, I, no, I, I feel don't. like I feel like we become increasingly unreliable narrators of our own experience. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, I, and, and it's funny because I'm guessing that a lot of musicians sort of equate either recording time with the passage of time or touring time with the yeah. passage of time, which of course didn't happen for the last two and a half years. Um, much more so than, you know, the average person would think it's Monday and then, okay, it's Friday. Great. You know, that the sort of normal work cycle, but I guess that yeah. is the work cycle for a touring recording musician. You think in terms of we'll be recording for these five weeks, we'll be touring for these eight weeks and Anything that happens around that is just... <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. And then there's this other thing that I've been thinking about lately, which is that, you know, since becoming uh, an adult, you know, I guess 18, um, I've had a lot of different jobs. I've been in a number of different relationships. I've lived in a lot of different apartments. Um, there have been a lot of changes, but I've been playing guitar and singing a few songs on stage this whole time. So mm -hmm. the more time goes by, the more um, shows and I guess touring, but, you know, especially just giving a concert becomes the most consistent and stable thing and sort of the thing with the least markers because nothing has changed. Yeah. It's always been a microphone on a stand, a guitar and a cable and an amplifier, maybe a couple of effect boxes and some people around me that I know, usually the same people, sometimes not. But, and then, and then on a stage, a few feet off the ground and then people standing over there watching and that has not changed in all these years. So, so I guess that contributes to my, um, yeah, exactly to what you were saying. Like it just kind of gets, gets foggy but in a great way like i also kind of feel like i remember every moment i just can't yeah put them in order yeah well i mean you, you just pulled out you know a random moment with ira's old band and yeah right moments, exactly. <laughs> moments of your own shows and stuff so right, right and yeah, right and things. watching yeah yeah like being a spectator my god like how many shows have you seen it's just totally nuts it's yeah so great yeah and then and as many of my friends have pointed out, because, I mean, it's not that I don't drink. I usually don't drink because I've usually driven somewhere. Yes. yes. And there are a lot of a lot of shows that um, folks forget. And just because I've 99.5% of the time been the most, <laughs> the most sober right. and clear headed. I remember when yeah. different things happened. That's great. That's really great. Yeah. Matthew from Not A Surf here with us today on 90.5 The Night. Uh, Friday, July 29th, Asbury Lanes in Asbury Park. Uh, Not A Surf will be playing there as part of a very short Northeast, for the most yep. part, tour this week. Um, and I, I wanted to bring up the band Pom Pom Squad. Oh, yeah. That you guys played with, I think, the most recent time you did more than a more than a one-off show in the United States uh, because they uh, I guess it was last year mm -hmm. covered popular yeah the, yeah the big not a surf hit from way back when mm -hmm. and which I thought was great and then I saw you guys brought them on tour with you which I thought was even greater which which kind of meant that you guys sort of approved 
of, oh, yeah. the, of the cover. Yeah, and, definitely. <laughs> and then you, they and you, because you were in it, yeah. went the extra, I'm not even going to say mile, the extra five miles to recreate the popular video. Yeah. I mean, almost shot for shot. It's pretty amazing, you know, they did it in the same school. It's so it's in the very same so it's Bayonne High and yep. and the the classroom scene is in the very same classroom. <laughs> and the the cheerle the different cheerleaders but same cheerleading team. The thing is that the the actual timeline is really funny. It, it's that uh Mia Barron, the singer, songwriter, guitar player, um she had tweeted uh you know, maybe I should, you know, I, or I'm thinking of, or whatever, you know, I'm thinking of um, recreating the Not A Third Popular video and playing all three main characters. And I had heard of them because they were on our, we share a record label, um, mm -hmm. in Europe at least. Uh, they're on this label called City Slang, even in the States, but we're just on City Slang in Europe. Anyway, they're, so they're label mates. And I saw this tweet and I just responded like, you know, that would be awesome. You know, three exclamation points. And she was like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And I guess it was one of those ideas that, um, I don't know, you know, when somebody has an idea that they like so much that they're like, well, now I have to do it. So she just went Especially after away. somebody confirmed it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was fantastic. I, I was thrilled. I mean, they're a great band and um, they're, their album is amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, they've got a, a zillion really, really good songs. Um, but I was obviously like just delighted that they <laughs> covered popular. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, and I, I sang a little bit on the chorus of the recording and, and then uh, on tour together, eventually after a few shows, Mia would uh, get up and sing popular with us which is really fun because we would trade verses and then on the last verse we'd do it together, which brought it to this really other kind of snarky level. <laughs> because you know, when you talk, two people talking aren't, it's not harmony, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's got something a bit wilder to it, two people talking at once, you know? Um, so it, it kind of gave it this funnier edge, even more obnoxious and funny. <laughs> It was just a blast. Oh, I bet. I bet. And, and I, I mean, I can only imagine that for the most part, is, I mean, as long as it's a decent version, almost any cover for a songwriter, like when somebody else covers your song, oh, that's great. it's flattering and, and wonderful and so, and, you know, the pie in the sky end of it is if it becomes a much bigger hit than yours was yeah 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 you get publishing you know, money <laughs> it's great it's great you know and and even you know even if i see somebody on youtube covering a song of ours and and they're you know maybe not super great at what they're doing like it's it's all fantastic you know i think it's it's great you know because i mean you know, when I got a four track for the first time, I, the first cassette four track I had, I'd borrowed from a friend. And um, I sat down with my Who chord book uh, and recorded little four track versions of all my favorite Who songs off the first couple of records <laughs> and then a version of uh, of uh, A New England by Billy Bragg. You know, and they were so primitive, but it was such a thrill to do. And I think, um, I mean, it's such a compliment for any songwriter, for somebody to get that enjoyment out yep. of um, taking that. Uh, I always think of covers sometimes as kind of like a, an amusement park ride that you get to get on, where you get to pretend that you wrote the song, you know, and it's really, that's really fun. So but anyway, yeah. yeah and I, and like I think, and I, I'd be hard pressed to think of anyone, any songwriter and or musician who came out of the gate writing and singing their own song yeah e everybody totally. started singing somebody else's song totally yeah it's it's a real it's a real joy i mean music is right it's it's meant to be shared and it's something we all do yeah together and you know 
And it's always kind of for somebody like, I, I feel like, I bet the first songs ever were things that parents sang to children, you know, uh, cave, cave woman yeah. and caveman trying to calm down that little baby and they, they sing to them. I mean, that, right, that's yeah. it, right? That's, that's what it is. It's meant to make you feel good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Matthew Cause from Not A Surf is here with us today on 90.5 The Nights. Once again, Friday, July 29th at Asbury Lanes with Burry. And uh, I wanted to ask one last question of you because I also noticed that uh, the most recent Not A Surf album, Never Not Together, is now, is it over two years old? Possibly. I, it might Possibly. be. Might be, um, yeah. Probably. <laughs> but it's, I, as a non- songwriter would have thought that you know, for the most part most of my touring songwriting friends always say when they're on the road they don't have time to write because there are so many other things happening yeah and they wish for time off yeah every songwriter has had the last two and a half or so years off yeah and ironically as i'm asking this question of different songwriters more than I expected, have said that they did not do any writing for most of the yeah. pandemic. Um, uh -huh. So I wonder where where you guys fall into that. Well, I I did a bunch, and there's definitely another not a surf record cooking right now. Um, yeah. But interestingly, I had to do something kind of extreme to write those songs, which is. Uh, for a couple of months, I got up at 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m. Um, to be up before the family was up because we've, I'm definitely not complaining. I mean, the absolute beautiful silver lining of the pandemic is that I've had so much family time, yep. but that's not really when you write. And so the rhythm of life uh, has has really centered around that. So I had to get up at five or five thirty to get an hour or two before uh, the family got up, which was great. So, but, you know, I wonder, I wonder what it is. Cause I, I guess I'm surprised too. I'm surprised I haven't written 30 songs. I've only right. written a dozen. Um, and, and in your experience of your straw poll of uh, songwriters and why they haven't, I, I wonder what it is that has resulted in that figure being lower than you expected. Well, I think part of it, maybe not completely, but part of it, I think, is definitely the not being on tour and not being yes. out in the world and not yes. you know, interacting with people. You know, you're kind of stuck in your home. Yeah. And there may not be the inspiration. I think you're right. Right. The, not the inspiration and not the kind of jostling just that being moved by moving mm -hmm. and, and also seeing shows. Like I, I, I know yeah. a lot of, a lot of songs that I've written in my life have, have uh, kind of had their uh, root in walking home from a show and feeling so buzzed by what I just saw that I had this something I, that started bubbling up and something mm -hmm. I need to get out. You know, uh, I definitely miss that, you know, that, that, feeling of being just just um energized yeah so yeah that's probably that's probably true and also my god the news has been so crazy that we've been also totally glued to our phones yeah. and televisions you know i mean the election january 6th i mean it's just outrageous the the yeah. um we've been too entertained <laughs> i mean please could someone make the news a little less riveting I'd, right, I'd, love, yeah. I'd, I'd love to be bored, really. I would, yeah. I'd welcome it. Yeah, so that was, and uh, I believe the first person who mentioned, uh, you know, oh, gosh, no. The, the weird thing is, is I haven't written any songs, was uh, Kevin from Eon Station and the Wrens. Right. And I, it was even more shocking for me because it's been, obviously, so many years since the Wrens last released an album. Right. Uh, I re I remember we were doing a similar Zoom interview, and he had a, a bureau behind him, and I I think I made the joke that like in my head 
every drawer in that bureau is full of notebooks and notes about songs. And he laughed and went, yeah, I wish it was too. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's really funny. It's really funny. Yeah. But, you, you just never know. It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. But as my mom, my mom has an expression. She says some people learn to ski in summer and swim in winter. And I guess what she means by that is that while you're not doing the thing, you might really be getting ready to do the thing. Mm. So I know all us musicians, even when we're not writing, some, something's happening. You know? Well, and I think that's part of the songwriter's brain that even, even when seemingly nothing is happening, your brain is taking yeah. a note of something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Matthew Cause from Not A Surf, thanks as always for hanging out for a bit and joining us here at 90.5 the night. Notasurf.com is obviously the logical yeah. place to start for anything Not A Surf related. Oh, and actually the reason I brought up the whole songwriting drought kind of thing is, uh, and you did say that there are some Not A Surf things oh, yeah. bubbling in there. Yeah. Any idea yet uh, of a timeline? Um, uh, at this, at this th point, obviously, 20. 23 at least oh yeah 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 i think we will um i think we're gonna go we'll probably record in the same place we recorded the last record which is a uh, rockfield studios oh, yeah. in, in wales and i think late late january early february will be about the time that we land there and do two or three weeks of basic tracks and then i take it home and usually sing uh right here i've got my sm7 <laughs> on a <laughs> on a movable stand and I'm looking into the computer that I record it on. So, um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll kick it off in January or February. Awesome. And uh, uh, quickly again, as, as we try and wrap up, you mentioned Rockfield. Have you seen the documentary? I About haven't. Rockfield? And I keep, I'm glad you reminded me of it because I need to. Nor have I, and I'm dying yeah. to. Yeah. I would love to. Yeah. It was so exciting being there and, Particularly uh, as I was interacting with a, an old friend of mine, um, Joe Habaika, on Facebook recently, he does this kind of di this day in this day in rock mm -hmm. kind, of, um, kind of thing. And there was one about Echo and the Bunnymen, and he and I are uh, one of our bonds is that we're super Echo and the Bunnymen fans. And Absolutely. I remember that last time I was at Rockfield, I got a little tour of the tape library, and there were some tape, some uh, boxes of outtakes up there, and. Uh, and this time, if we go back, I'd like to spend a little more time in that tape library. I don't think I'm allowed to put any of the tape on, but I'd like to at least take the boxes down, open them up, look at the track listing, try and see what, get an idea of what's in there. But there are lots of very interesting looking tapes in that library, and I, I, I want to dig back in. I bet. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew from Not A Surf, thank you so much, as always, for spending a few minutes with us. Maybe one of these days we'll do it in person at the radio right station, but <laughs> that would be awesome. But for now, this is okay. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, well, hopefully that's in our future. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, and uh, and see whoever I see at the show. We're excited. Uh, I will definitely be at the show. Yes, thank awesome. you. Friday, July 29th at the Asbury Lanes in Asbury Park. Not a surf with hurry. Return to the Jersey Shore. Thanks a million. All right, thanks, Jeff. Take care.